Hi, today we're making black bean burgers and we top it with hummus and sprouts. Uh, it's a great way to eat these. You should try them. I think you'll be really surprised. The first thing is we're going to make the binding agent or some people call it like a uh, flax egg replacer. And you just grind up some flax seed in a coffee grinder or a small device like this. So to make the uh, the egg replacer basically, right? There are, well, I don't know what we'd call this, but it- This is flax egg. It's the glue, yeah, they call it a flax egg, but it, it holds the burgers together. It is three tablespoons of warm water and one tablespoon of flax seed ground. And we just ground it up in a little coffee grinder. Mm, just mix it together a little bit and let it sit for like 10 minutes and it turns into a gooey thing. All right, well, we're looking for gooey. So here's the prep that you need. Uh, how many cans? Three mm -hmm. cans of black beans and one can of kidney beans. Okay, and then we have made some uh, flax. The binder, the flax egg. Thank you, flax egg. How much oats? Uh, one cup of oats, one cup of cooked brown rice. So a cup of oats, a cup of brown rice. And then we've got Half a teaspoon of pepper, two te teaspoons of paprika, two teaspoons of garlic powder, and two teaspoons of onion powder. Then it's one teaspoon of liquid smoke. We use a little more sometimes. And a quarter cup of your choice of barbecue sauce. Now with the barbecue sauce, make sure it doesn't have high fructose corn syrup. I mean, it's going to be a little sugary. But the uh, other thing that has worked that we've used in the past is also teriyaki sauce. Yes. Those burgers were good as hell too, teriyaki burgers. If we still had that teriyaki sauce, we would totally use it. Yeah, it was a thick teriyaki. And then the next stage is you need to rinse all these, right? Yep, they have to be drained and rinsed. All right, and then is there anything else I need to know before we start? I don't think so. All right, so we'll set it up, bring it back. All right, so she's going to show you how we add this. Okay, so we use a stand mixer for this. And it's easier to do, add everything outside of the mixer. Put it in the bowl and then put it in the mixer. And there's really no rhyme or reason to any of it. It just gets all mixed in. Oh. Uh -oh. Liquid smoke. Liquid smoke. Maybe a little more. Smoky. We like it smoky. And we got this recipe from someone on the internet, I think Gabriel or something, but it wasn't gluten free and we didn't like the seasoning that much so we changed it around a good bit, I think. Um, and kind of made it kind of made it our thing. Own. Yeah. So it's less processed. Now again, if you were trying to stay, here's where most of the calories is, is the sauce honestly. So you want to try to buy low fat barbecue sauce if you can find it. If not, like I said, you can use Hell, you could probably even use maybe some sort of ketchup or something like that if you had to go really low-cal. I don't know how good it would be, but... I think it would be like ketchup on meatloaf instead of barbecue sauce. Yeah, fair enough. Unless you really, really love ketchup. But I mean, this is a lot of burgers and yeah. a quarter cup of barbecue sauce isn't that much. It is spread out over a lot of burgers. And then the flaxseed, you know. You don't... See, it turns into like a gummy, goopy... And we maybe could use an egg replacer. I can't remember if we tried one before. Um, like so it energy. was supposed to be gluten that you used in it. A quarter right. a quarter cup of gluten, but or you can make um, a flax egg. So we decided to do the flax egg grout. Um, and again, you do get a, a little bit of fat with the flax eggs. So this is why we call these kind of uh, yellow light foods. They're not really amber. They're kind of yellow. Um, I would not say they're green, like eat as much as you want. No, this we is only like usually a, eat two burgers a sitting, and they're small. But we don't eat buns or condiments with it, really. We use hummus and... Yeah, we take the buns away, so that drops a lot of the calories and stuff. So what speed are we setting this on, and how do we use it? Um, I just start it low, and let it mix, and just kind of scrape the sides down. Yeah, this part's kind of a process, because you got to break the beans up a bit without turning them into a total mush. They can't be blended. You want pieces of them in there, but they do have to be broke up. So if someone didn't have a stand mixer, they could do this with a bowl and just kind of 
Going around smashing, going around smashing, going around smashing. A potato but, smasher would work. Potato smasher, all right. How long did we do this? Is there any sort of... Until it looks right. Okay, I'll, I'll show you what it looks like when it's done. So Lorelai's slowly increasing the speed as it goes. This is when it starts to break the beans apart. What's funny about this is, unlike real meat, um, you can actually eat this as you go. You can taste it because there's nothing in here that's, you know, will contaminate you. So uh, that's actually how I got the spices, just how we liked them. Yeah, we tasted it and tasted it. If you're just new to giving up meat, there's a lot of benefits and advantage to not the cleanup. The cleanup is great. The grease. There's no oil, so you don't have nothing. to worry about cross contaminating everything. I mean, we don't use eggs, so there's really nothing. Nothing. I mean, it's besides the easiest, washing the vegetables, it is the it's a, easiest cleanup ever. Yeah, I mean, washing the vegetables about it. Once they're washed, you're good to go. Yep. Now you can get two pieces of uh, wax paper and crush out little patties. I believe that's the way we saw it done on another channel, but I really like these silicone molds. I think they're worth the investment. I'll link them on Amazon. If you're going to make a lot of these, we were eating these all the time, so it was worth it to get a few of these molds, and they are awesome. They, you barely even have to clean them. Like You'll see how easy they are. So. That was pretty easy. That was only mixed for about a minute and a half to maybe two. This kind of consistency you're looking for. You can still see a little bit of the beans, but they're crushed. It smells good as hell. And you just, we like, I, I like the scraper to put these in. This, well, I guess this is technically a spatula. Rubber scraper. That's actually not true. <laughs> is it rubber scraper or is it spatula? No, because the other one's a pancake turner. So this is the yeah, spatula. The thing that, well, we have to have a lesson in <laughs> culinary here. This thing that everybody calls a spatula is actually called a turner. And the reason I know this is I got in trouble and missed a question in my home ec class. This is actually called a lifter, and some people say a pancake lifter. A spatula is actually a little bit blade like this. This is probably a scraper, right? I don't think I have an actual real spatula. They look like kind of like a cake knife, sort of. Yeah, I don't even think they really make those anymore. Yeah. I haven't seen one in years. But if you remember UHF, Weird Al's best film and pretty much only film. There's a commercial for Spatula City. That's right. It's like, buy 10 spatulas and get one free. And all the kids are like excited and piling in the car. Oh my God, Spatula City. It's like the container store. <laughs> like you need 10, 10 spatulas. <laughs> I love that commercial. It's fantastic. So you'll see how many um, we can make here. And then... After she kind of wipes them and packs them in, you want to clear where they combine. Like you'll see the, I don't know, the little walls. The honeycomb. Kind of just <laughs> run your finger over them because when they freeze, you don't want them to connect together. So I'm just kind of run my finger over it. Mmm, that tastes good. And you can try using a spatula if you were going to cook for guests or something, but it's just us eating, so finger away. <laughs> Shut up. That didn't come out the way I meant. <laughs> Alright, we're gonna just have to stop. You can't control yourself. If I forgot to mention, um, you need to freeze these patties for them to work right. If you try to cook them like this, they don't work. And the great thing about these molds is they go right into the freezer. Yep, we just put a, a, t a hat on them. And um, I really love these molds, let me tell you. Every once in a while you get kitchen products that really make your life a lot easier. Doing these by, uh, can you put this on? I can't reach it very good. Doing these by, um, I think the first few times we did them by wax paper, it was a pain in the butt. Oh, it took hours. Yeah, it took a long time. Yeah, it was ridiculous. So you just put that in the freezer overnight. Now, when you pop these things out, you can actually freeze, um, you can actually throw them right on a grill and they will come out more like a meat consistency. They'll be soft inside and crispy with little grill marks. But we're going to do it different, and we're going to toast them, and you'll see what that's like. But let's show you how far the recipe goes. I'll be right back. So we have done two trays, and this is what's left. What we usually do is we're going to actually make a bunch more because reasons, and we just like to batch cook and freeze these things and keep them on deck all month. 
So we're gonna cook another round, but this is what's left. And now you can either take some wax paper and make patties, but what we actually do is make a meatloaf out of the rest of this. So we're gonna make like a bean loaf and uh, we'll save this portion and then we'll show you how it's done. So here's a better idea what they look like when they're frozen. Um, it was totally worth it to me to get these silicone presses because we were eating these all the time. And they make really like a perfect size burger, I think. So they'll come out pretty easy, but when you do pull them up, sometimes, you know, they get a little tough sometimes to peel out the first time. But then um, since they're silicone, you just wiggle them, they, they pop out really, really good. They don't even leave, let's see if I pop one out here. They don't even leave uh, any residue. Dang, this is hard with one hand. <laughs> there we go. So they just pop out. And you can take them at this point while they're frozen and grill them. They work good, I'm told, grilling. But we actually do something different. We air fry these. And what it does is it puts like a, a crunchy coat and it kind of tricks your brain into thinking you have a bun without all the calories of a bread and bun. So we will put hummus and sprouts. So we'll show you this when we're done. I'll link these on Amazon. They're totally worth it, I think, if you're gonna make a lot. Otherwise, you can just hand press them between uh, two pieces of wax paper and you'll be fine, but it's a little messy and kind of pain in the butt. This is really easy. So we put the burgers out and these are air fried and so they are crunchy, so you don't even need a bun. Uh, if you were to do it on a grill, you would just throw them on in just a couple minutes and you know it'll give you the grill marks. It'll give you more of a meat consistency. This tastes more like, um, I don't know, like a crunchy, uh, crunchy, crunchy uh, bean burger. <laughs> burger. So we put down the hummus, and we have a recipe for that. You can just follow that. Homemade hummus. We put a little uh, seasoning salt, and then we use our broccoli sprouts we grew, and that's it. And it's pretty gourmet. Now remember, don't use like any oil to oil these down. We'll actually cook them in these Pyrex things, and they come out. They don't. They're not. They don't stick and they don't have a problem. Same with the silicone. The whole point is to avoid oil by cooking this way. So this is what we do with the leftovers. We make a little mini loaf. Um, and well, I will put barbecues on top. And how long do you cook this for and what's the deal? Um, I cook it at about 375. And I think we cook it for like 30 minutes. About or that. until it's done. You can usually, I mean, there's nothing to cook for, you know, it doesn't have to come up to temp for anything. Um, it's not meat. So it's basically like when the barbecue sauce looks right on top and gets sticky and gooey. And it's good to go. All right. And that's what it looks like done. Maybe you get a slice of it, but it is yummy.